哈喽，哎呀，我胃太重了，擦盖。嗯，啊，我现在为知道为什么世界有男孩子，啊，为了要挂那些了啊，啊，你们女孩子就抬不动了。哈喽，你好。对不起，我眼睛不怎么理想，所以这样哈，盖住眼睛还可以看到吗？看到眼睛哈 ，OK。啊， l o v e you。嗯，男孩子越来越多一点点哈，啊，竞争力哈 ，OK。你好，师傅好。你好，好，啊，是，越南哈，哈，大陆越南，嗯嗯 ，OK， 哎呀 ，Hello。啊，你好，吉祥吉祥，和尚吉祥，哎，哎，就这里好像大家读书都看得到啊，有哈、啊，嗯、，I am very very impressed the way you're running your life. <laughs> I don't know how you do it every day. <laughs> I only do it one Sunday, and I feel very, very <laughs> effortful already. How do you do all this every day, huh? You go to work, and you come back. You cook, you wash, you shop, you kiss a husband, you kiss a wife. You go to bed, you <laughs> kiss the children. <laughs> and you mow, mow <laughs> your grass. You. Water your garden. Oh, you doing all that? How you do all this, huh? And every day, right? I mean, every day you go to work, but you come back, you do another work, huh? And you survive, huh? And you still meditate two and a half hour a day? No. Two and a half, um, maybe <laughs> hours. Yeah. <laughs> wow. No wonder, very difficult to go up, huh? Yeah. The Buddha, when he was alive, uh, his disciples, all monks, yeah, two thousand strong, two thousand plus. Everybody do nothing, no working, no wife, no kids, no worry. Oh, I don't need this, right? Can you still see me? No. Uh, yeah, you can see them here. They can see me. My eye hurt. My nose running. As soon as I say, "Okay, I have to go," I mean, I have to come here, and my nose start running. <laughs> my eyes start to hurt. Ah, last time, last time wasn't too bad, but the initiation karma comes uh, after slowly. Sometimes it come before. Sometimes it come right at the day of initiation. Sometimes it come half or quarter beforehand, and then it come during the initiation. Then come some more after. Sometimes it come after. And uh, wow, I truly make an effort to come here with all this cravat and everything. <laughs> I think I'm super woman. <laughs> Consider. <laughs> Consider how I felt. <laughs> yeah, I was really trying to bargain. You know, I keep asking everybody, how many people, how many Westerners, how many new people, anybody who did not see me before and stay for a little while, maybe another few days or another week. You know, I'm bargaining, trying to see maybe I can see them tomorrow or next day when I feel better. But no, somebody is going. 
two more, yeah, two or three of them, and then the, another two go next days, and another five go another day. <laughs> I lose, you win, you win, you win. Okay, I think I want, maybe it's better, all of you shave your head and become like this for me. Then every day I send all of you go out, walk in to go for arm and then come back and I take a siesta <laughs> already and then I wake up, I talk to you. Mm. Then I will also shave my head again just to accompany you so you don't feel, <laughs> you don't feel too bad. <laughs> anyway, there's not much I can do, yeah. Sometimes, uh, I can get out of samadhi easily, sometimes I cannot. And it's very difficult to get out when I cannot get out, <laughs> like today, <laughs> like today. Today I'm like a walking, talking, uh, automaton, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> okay, well, I'm here already, so let's get down to the business. Okay, yeah, I think today I was doing some makeup and try to button something, you know, or hook up something, you know, and put on my jewelry or whatever, and then this thing don't work, that hook doesn't work, and it's <laughs> some uh, button is too new, it doesn't clap on the other one. The trousers don't fit or whatever, and the shoes open mouth <laughs> laughing at me. <laughs> a new shoes. Not this one, not this one. This one is, is another one. This is old one, yeah. In the old time, when people make shoes, it lasts a long time, eh? a lifetime. Today, many of my shoes keep open mouth and laughing. Maybe happy shoes. <laughs> Before I design some clothes, say, uh, happy yogi, right? <laughs> and now uh, they uh, mm, imitate me, they design these uh, happy shoes, <laughs> happy yogi shoes or something. This one look better, I can see you. Mm. I, I just need a, a little bit uh, bigger to read, but I could also read like this. Just with the glass, it's easier, that's all, reading glass. Yeah, consider my age, my eyes still not too bad, you know? When it's been um, harassed all <laughs> these years, it's still not bad, eh? Yeah. Thanks to Kuan Yin Method. <laughs> yeah. So then when I was doing all this uh, dressing up and button down, and then I was thinking, oh, uh, Shekamuni Buddha, he was so right. He was so right, he said. Only man can become Buddha, be happy, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what you think. <laughs> yeah. I guess if you are man, you cannot also become Buddha, you also cannot become Buddha. You know why? I told you before already. If you are man, you cannot become Buddha. If you are woman, you cannot become Buddha. If you are uh, gay, you cannot become Buddha. If you're lesbian, you cannot become Buddha. If you're bisexual, you cannot become Buddha. Nobody can. <laughs> Only if you don't remember anymore that you're man or woman or bisexual or a lesbian or, or gay or transvestite or not transvestite or uh, you transformed yourself. And then you really transcend all this, then you can become Buddha. Yeah. But I was thinking of a physical way, you know. Men, you don't even have to wear anything, you just show up. <laughs> right? <laughs> In India, many gurus, some enlightened gurus also didn't wear much. Some I saw, you know, didn't wear much. Yeah. Or maybe just a lawn cloth or something, or just wrap something. Oh, how convenient. Eh? And then I can do away with all these uh, Cinderella shoes, yeah, and then all this uh, jewelry and all that stuff, yeah. Yeah, then it will be very convenient, time-saving. I thought Sekamoni Buddha was so right, yeah, if I was a man. Yeah. 
would be better for me. I can always show up in anything or nothing even. Yeah, you know, right? Indian people, you know, right? Guru, they don't care. <laughs> they don't care. And if I don't look, suppose I am a man, and if I don't look as beautiful as I am right now, <laughs> all I do is just grow some hair on the face, then I will look okay, right? Look dignified, like a guru, yeah. Okay, that's that for gossiping. Mm. I'm here already. The most difficult part is that to get ready. <laughs> and when I'm here already, I'm awake. <laughs> I feel better now. I feel more awake now than when I first came. Huh? Yeah, I thought, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah, in my state of, of being this morning, I wanted to wake myself up, truly. I did put alarm clock and everything. I did get up okay, right? I went to try to be a normal. <laughs> I even make a toast, some toast. And then I thought I have some toast to come, you know, stomach that didn't feel too well these days. And then I make one toast, I burn one toast. I make another toast, I burn another toast. I make another one, third one, burn. Four toasts, all burnt, beyond <laughs> recognition. I said, okay, today is not my toast day. <laughs> and then I just grab whatever, you know, and drink, try to make a tea, but then I forgot. I put tea, but I forgot to drink. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a new, new place I've been moving, you know, and very messy and tiring and chaotic because I had no time to organize my stuff yet. And I'm afraid to ask anyone to help. Because sometimes when I ask them to help, <laughs> I better do it myself. Uh, or I have to take some other garbage <laughs> from them instead, and it, 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 it just doesn't pay. Therefore, yeah, I feel like <laughs> surrounded with <laughs> material things. I wish my destiny is a little lighter than mine right now. You know, like being a, a Baba, Babu, or whatever, or Mataji in India even, and just sit there and hugging people, rubbing their head, and that's all I had to do. <laughs> My destiny in this lifetime, alas, is so complicated. Too much work, too difficult, <laughs> too little time, too complicated. And I thought I left home, you know, then my life would be, you know, like a uh, her, her, very simple. Yeah, two, three pair of clothes, that's all you have to do. You don't even have to comb your hair. <laughs> yeah, having hair is another problem, you know, you have to have to put oil on or something. Otherwise, it goes bzz, bzz, like that. <laughs> and have to design the jewelry. I thought I'm there already, but I'm not yet there, so. Very difficult sometimes for me to stay on this planet. Very difficult. More difficult than you think. Uh, I say, there's no more place. Tickets sold out. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Pick a sold out you like? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every week is sold out. <laughs> Lucky I'm not a dancer or singer or something, otherwise, every boy, other artist dancing, uh, singing, maybe just uh, probably had to find another job. <laughs> How long can you stay with your visa? I know, but how long is your visa one, allowed? One month. One month? Oh, not bad. And how long you you allow me to stay in India if I go there? British passport. I think one month. One month? Oh, yeah. Equal. <laughs> yeah, before we used to have like six months, huh? 
and then can extend to one year, long time ago when I was uh, a little yogi somewhere. <laughs> and now it's uh, difficult, huh? Yeah, I have to go to embassy, get visa before you just go landing visa or something. Actually, many people can stay if they want to. Nowadays, it's difficult. Mm. That was because of some incidents, you know, like some foreigners came and abused the kindness of the Indian people. Because Indian people are very hospitable, you know. Even if they don't have much, they give everything. They give you ev everything that you need. So the government kind of tried to stop this kind of uh, mis misuse. <laughs> I, I don't blame them. I don't blame them. The thing is, uh, maybe the foreigners did not really want to misuse their kindness. It's just they did not understand the tradition of India because they are a given and given and given. And they thought, oh, that's okay. They love to give and they still have. That's why they can give. But it's not true. It's not true. Mm. It's like sometimes... Uh, uh, like I keep giving and people think <laughs> I have a lot. <laughs> and sometimes it's true, sometimes not. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, I love to give anyway, whenever necessary. Yeah, yes. The Indian people, they just give. <laughs> necessary or not, they treat you like God. It's tradition like that. And it's still like that. It's still like that in India. Hmm? So many of your Indian brothers and sisters keep asking me to go to India. So I, how do I say go there, stay one month and then fly out and come back, go back forth, back forth, like that? Yeah? We are not sure, Master. Huh? We are not sure how long you could stay with British past. Maybe we can take... Maybe three months maximum, no? I remember a long time ago, I went back to... because I was invited to Pune or somewhere, I forgot. I think they give you three months, but you have to have a visa. You have to go and apply for a visa. Mm. Yeah, even three months is not a lot. Huh? I just uh, sit for a few, or a few like I sit in for a few hours, and then it's three months already. <laughs> yeah, it takes. It doesn't take long. Time passes so quickly. Yeah, like every day, I feel like I have not even slept yet. It's already. Sunrise, <laughs> yeah. And then I have not even to, done anything yet. It's sunset already, for example, like that. In this world, we have trouble with uh, the timing, yeah, time. It makes us grow old, make us uh, worry about deadline, about payment, about going to work on time. <sighs> about going to school on time, everything is time, time, time. It gives pressure a lot. And I really admire you that you even can work, raise a family, and meditate, and come here for Sunday or two, three weeks. I don't know if you are superhuman or, <laughs> or what. <laughs> it's truly very, very good of you. Mm. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I'm not very proud of myself <laughs> because I also have a artist, artist uh, tendency, you know, in my in my being. And uh, sometimes uh, the artists get a better of me. You know, I prefer to go out somewhere, take photograph, <laughs> some video or something, instead of. Come here, see you. <laughs> well, today I'm here, huh? It's good, it's good. And I don't feel like I'm a good dog caretaker either. Before I used to have them, all of them around me. Nowadays I can only take care of two maximum at the time two or three. Uh, if more, I will feel easily, you know, uh, tired yeah. or uh, trouble, frowning, <laughs> get older quicker with children. 
I just have to let them take turn, you know, like at night who is who, <laughs> and morning who is who, and afternoon who is who, yeah, like that, and then they rotate. It's not too bad, better than uh, better than nothing. I'm thinking, yeah. <laughs> that's I I do all I can, but that's all I can. <laughs> There's a joke about a restaurant outside, you know, they say, eat all you can for five dollars. Yeah, you know, uh, many of them in America or Europe, I'm not sure Europe has, but America has had a lot of, uh, when I was there, there I saw a lot of them. <laughs> and there's a joke about one uh, a restaurant, it's, it's written outside, eat all you can, five dollars. And then the guy come in and eat, 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 and then he come and get more, and then the, the owner came out and stopped him. He said, no, no more. He said, what you have written outside, say, eat all you can for five dollars. And the owner said, that's all you can eat. <laughs> 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 eat all you can. <laughs> that's all you can eat. <laughs> Okay, we continue with the Lord Mahavira half a story last time. Okay, the merchant uh, has uh, was moved to see her plight and saw that she was a kind of a, a noble spirited girl. She was not like a, a you know a low class or unbecoming or something like that. So he he said, "Child, I am merchant." Danava, I am a follower of uh, Nigran shamans and live in this town. Looking at your troubles, I feel depressed. If you do not wish to go with the courtesan, I will not allow this to, to happen. Uh, I will buy you by paying a hundred thousand gold pieces. Would you come with me? Would you live with me as my daughter? So, of course, an orphan princess sold as a slave arrived at the house of merchant Danava. But his wife, again, another one, Mula, his wife, Mula, became doubtful as soon as she saw the divinely beautiful girl entering her household. Yeah, I promised myself to look at the boys, and <laughs> I try to do it today. I always look this way. Not fair. <laughs> but, uh, mm. <laughs> the moment Mula, you know, the wife, set her eyes on Vasumati, she saw a rival for the favors of her husband. Son were the seeds of doubt, even for her upright man. Yes. Normally, she trusted him as an upright man and husband, faithful husband. But now she saw such a beautiful girl entering her place, she doubted even him. She doubted even him. She thought maybe uh, her beauty has enchanted her husband. It's possible, yeah, it's possible because a man loves beauty. I also love beauty. <laughs> I'm not a man, but I love every beautiful thing. I went out and see all the flowers, and I said, oh, you are so beautiful. I will capture you in this camera, and you will be immortal. You like that? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and today all the birds came, and somehow they sing so much beautiful songs. I haven't seen it ever since I came here, just today. They sing so loud, so loud, and so happy, happy. I thought they loved to eat something. I put out some bread, they didn't eat it. They just keep singing. <laughs> I haven't seen that even in Sihu. There's so many birds gathered together, you know. Every little twig, they have birds, or have birds on it, and they're singing, singing so happily, so happily. Today, yeah, I, that wakes me up a little bit more. <laughs> mm. So I thank them. Huh? Mm. So due to her sweet demeanor, Vasumati had 
a magical influence over the household. The fragrance of her poise and coolness of her nature inspired Danava to call her Chandana Sanangut. But his wife Mula was smitten with envy. She thought that this poisonous flower should be nipped in the bud. Right. So last time we read up to there, right? Ah, okay. One day the merchant uh, Danava left the town on some business errand. This was a golden opportunity for Mula. She relieved all the servants of the household and caught Chandana, replaced her beautiful dress with rags, took off all her ornaments, tied her in shackles, and shaved her long silky hair. Chandana uttered in surprise, Mother, what are you doing? I have done no harm to you. For what misdeed are you punishing me? Mula silenced Chandana, put her in a dark cell, locked it, and left. Danava returned on the third day. When he saw the house abandoned, he was taken aback. He called, Chandana, or oh Chandana, but no one replied. He went at the back of the house and shouted once again. Chandana shouted back, Father, I am here in the cellar on the back side. The merchant went in and saw that the cellar was locked. Looking through the bars of the iron gate, he saw Chandana in her wretched condition and started crying. What happened to my daughter? What evil soul has done this to you? Chandana replied calmly, Father, get me out first and then I will tell you everything. The merchant broke the lock and brought out Chandana. She asked, Father, I have not taken even a drop of water for the last three days. Please give me something to eat and drink. The merchant went around the house, but everything was locked. Not even a utensil was available. Wow. I think the <laughs> wife <laughs> is really <laughs> uh, something, huh? He saw a basket containing a handful of dry post brand meant for cows. He took the basket and put it before Chandana. Say, child, eat some of this. I shall call a blacksmith to cut your shackles. Oh, dear. Humans, yeah. Actually, this is nothing very surprising. A long time ago, hundreds of years back, I was a master, but not very famous, no? normal, normal master. My so-called wife also locked me in the house and then starved me to death. Yeah. Too jealous, too much jealous with many female disciples come and worship in me like the way you do. Mm. Lucky I'm not a handsome guy. Yeah. <laughs> Even though some men are jealous with his wife for coming for initiation, but not to this extent, I don't think, right? Well, I never know. <laughs> I never know. Yeah, many, many times things like that happen in the family. And of course, there's nobody there to help me to break the lock. It was happened like some, we live in far away area and somehow nobody came at that time. And maybe some people came and then see the door locked, they think, Master is not home. So they left, yeah. Okay, so it was the twelfth year of Lord Mahavira Swami's spiritual practices. Spending the monsoon stay at the Vaisali, he came to a garden in Kaushambi. It was the time around which uh, the incidents of uh, satanic attack on Champa. 
Fall of Champa, Sacrifice of Queen Darini, Auction of Princess Vasumati as a slave, etc. Same time. Uh, these things were occurring. Lord Mahavira Swami, with his penetrating knowledge and perception, had a glimpse of all this. He made an almost impossible resolution on the first day of the dark half of the month, a pause. What is that then? December to January. December to January. Uh, it's kind of uh, end of, uh, end of summer, winter. No, middle of winter. Uh -huh. Kind of uh, midwinter solstice or something? Festival? No? No festival. Okay. The Lord, Lord Mahavira said, I will accept alms for breaking my fast only from a princess that has become a slave. He announced like that, without, without anyone telling him this story. Nobody knew that Chandana was a princess in any case. She did not tell, yes, because for her safety, also because her parents already being harmed and her country lost and she ran away. Yeah? So if she has told that she's a princess, then maybe she's been killed too. Yeah. So she didn't say anything. It's just her demeanor sometimes give out an air of royalty. Yes. But she did not tell anything. Uh, nowadays I feel a little safer, but mostly in those years, you know, these years, um, before these a couple of years, before SMTV, I was alone in the world and I have never told anyone that I am Supreme Master this and that or what I do, nothing. Yeah, I had to keep low profile for safety. So it's a similar situation, I guess. <laughs> Though I wasn't a princess. <laughs> when I went out, I, I play stupid sometimes, <laughs> talk nonsense or something. And nobody suspected anything. And if I was kind of begin to be suspected, then I moved somewhere else. Yeah. Nowadays, I feel a little safer, though. <laughs> Just a little safer. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, Lord Mahavira yeah, um, has announced that he will only accept arms for breaking his fast only from a princess that has become a slave. During this uh, monsoon retreat season, maybe he did not eat anything. So now is the first meal after the fast. Mm -hmm. So he, he wanted a princess to feed him. <laughs> yeah, he must have a clairvoyance to see something happening to that country, to the princess. So, and that too, only if she has a shaven head even, or oh, she was shaven. <laughs> she was shaven by the, the wife of the merchant, yeah. And her limbs shackle, only then, yeah. She has not eaten for three days. She is sitting on the threshold of a house. She has posed bran lying in a basket. And she has a smile as well as tears in her eyes at the same time. Unless these conditions are met, I resolved to continue my practice and not to break my fast. Oh, what a difficult condition for breakfast. <laughs> break fast. <laughs> Unless, yeah, this condition presented. He will not begin to eat again. Four months passed since Lord Mahavira Swami started going from door to door to beg in the town of Kashambi. Four months since. Means he didn't eat anything for four months. One day Mahavira approached the house of the chief minister of Kashambi, Sugupta. Sukupta's wife, Nanda, was a devotee of Lord Pashvanath, 
and was acquainted with the ways of ascetic shamans. Looking at Mahasraman Vataman, I mean Lord Mahavira, yeah, approaching her house for alms, she became enthralled. She requested Prabhu to accept pure and ascetic food. Mahavira turned back without accepting anything. Nanda became very disappointed, cursing her own bad luck. She said, Mahashraman Vataman came to my house, and what a misfortune! I could not provide him anything. Nanda's mate reassured her. Lady, why are you so dejected? This ascetic has been approaching almost every household in Kaushambi for arms and without taking a single grain or uttering a word, he just returning back. Not just only her house, but every house he visited. He never took anything because it's not the condition that he has set out. He probably was looking for Princess Chandana. Huh? <laughs> so we have been witnessing all this for the last four months. Oh, so he didn't eat anything. He just went from door to door for four months, but not taking any arms, not taking any food offered to him. Wow. This... Uh, Man, it's really tough. <laughs> I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> yeah. This is nothing unique at your place, so why be so dismayed? The words of the maid added to Nanda's more distress. <laughs> what? So the Mahashrama is returning with our arms for the last four months? That means Bra Prabhu has been on fast for four months and I have not been able to serve him. How unlucky I am! At that moment, Minister Sugupta arrived, her husband. Eh? Nanda told him everything. Sugupta also became worried. King Satanic and Queen Marigavati also got the news that Shraman Mahavira was wandering in Kaushambi without food or water for four months. Wow. Without food, okay, but without water for four months. He must have really been sustained by extraordinary magic power that he earned all this time being an ascetic and pure and truthful and determined, not wavering. Uh, so, everyone was sad and worried. The ruling family went for Lord Mahavir Swami's darshan and requested him to accept food. But he was unmoved. After he left his kingdom, yeah, the ruling family is still in power. Huh? So they came and asked him to eat something, but he still uh, re rejected. Five months and twenty-five days had passed since Lord Mahavira Swami had eaten anything. He became breatharian, huh? <laughs> that is possible also. One time I was also like that. If you had to do it, you can, yeah. But don't try, okay, please. I told you already my story when I was breatharian. I was in a temple working like a working and keeping the temple, cooking for everybody, and I ate once a day. Yeah. And then the, <laughs> the abbot, maybe he was joking or he just uh, feeling guilty because I'm the only one, the only monk that eats uh, only once a day there, and he, because his body not well, he has to take uh, food six times a day, yeah. So he said to everybody at the table, say, oh, a Ching Hai, she eats only once a day, but it's like more than three times a day <laughs> what she eats. So that's it. Uh, from that time, I didn't eat anything anymore. 
and I still continue working, I did not feel missing anything. It's so funny, you know? So funny, your willpower is always so strong. I don't know if you're destined for it yeah, or something, or it's a part of my life that I should go through. So I just quit eating just like that, nothing. I didn't even drink <laughs> for I don't know how long. Everybody worry and people come to the temple and look, look and all that, and I was feeling kind of <laughs> embarrassed. And, and then I just started eating again. And the first mouth, mouth of food is uh, taste like uh, if I tear this paper and eat it. <laughs> Don't ta didn't taste anything. And during the, the time I did not eat or drink, I did not feel anything special. I just quit like that, like, j just like that. <laughs> no preparation, no supporting group, nothing. I didn't know much about anything. I just didn't feel like eating anymore. Okay, and then so I quit, and then I don't eat, don't drink, nothing, but I continue working, and I feel just like normal. <laughs> I feel like before, just exactly like before. So the abbot was very worried, said, you are not eating anything, and you're working like that. Is it okay? I said, okay. And I tell him I can eat if I want. If I don't want, I don't eat. <laughs> I told him like that. And he was like a buffer, but, you know, continued to watch me in case I drop dead or something, and he has to be responsible. So people tried to coax me to eat, and slowly I got fed up. <laughs> so I say, all this bothering is worse than eating <laughs> and being uh, humiliated by eating. <laughs> so I begin eating again, but it did not feel like. But after I eat the, the first meal, even though it didn't taste a lot, I didn't eat a lot and it didn't taste at all. After the first meal, I felt like I'm dropping from, physically speaking, as if you're from the fifth floor and drop down to the, gently, you know, to the first floor, like that. You feel dropping, really. I don't know, you just feel like that. You, I don't know how to describe it. When I was not eating, I feel like I'm walking on the cloud. My body was light. Uh, my mind is free. I feel happier than before. I feel just so free. And uh, I first eat the first few mouthful, and then I feel like I'm, I'm dropping down. It's just a feeling, you cannot describe it. Uh, very gently, like you float, floating from the fifth floor at least, you know, all the way down to the first floor. That's the way it felt. My first meal after, after spontaneous uh, breatharian, yeah. I guess if some of you try breatharian before and the first meal you eat, maybe you feel like that too or not? Yes. You do? You did? Um, then why bother eating? <laughs> yeah, if you could um, go without food, just go. Hmm? But only if you're healthy still, continue the same like before, then you should continue. Hmm? Yeah, and now I know why I had to eat, you know, <laughs> make more karma, <laughs> more affinity, yeah. So that I can do a different job instead of just uh, cleaning nuns in a small temple. <laughs> Even then, I, I didn't think of being a master, nothing. Just one day, is a group of... Uh, African American came knocking at my door and said, They're looking for Master Ching. <laughs> looking for Master Ching. <laughs> and, then, and then after that, I still run away and I go to Germany. I go to Taiwan. Oh, uh, no, Taiwan knock first. American knock after. Uh, they always try chasing after me. And so afterward, I said, Oh, now what the, what the hair? <laughs> I go out <laughs> preaching, <laughs> helping people. The thing is, this group of African-Americans, they know nothing about the light and sound. They are practicing African kind of a spiritual tradition. Eh? And they really practice very hard so that they become more clairvoyant and they, become, they can go in trance yeah, and tell people about what happened to them and what should they do to uh, remedy their... Uh, maybe trouble at that time, you know, the other people, yeah. I saw her one time in trance, yes, and she was so big like this. Yeah. 
and then her husband is so big like this, you know, only one third of her size or one fourth or one fifth even, very skinny and young. But when she was in trance, she could fall and he can hold her like I hold a piece of paper. Yeah, it's funny, yes. And she kept telling people what's uh, this and what that without knowing what she's saying. Mm. Afterwards, she wake up, she doesn't remember of what she has been saying. And people uh, came to her and then, you know, seek her help and that. And she was anointed as the queen. Queen Azula was her name. It's not her name, it's just the spiritual name given to her. After she practiced uh, in her tradition, in African tradition. And then, in certain time, she has to lay down, lay down flat on the floor, and then she has to lay on a, on a stone, you know? A stone as a pillow, not a pillow, not soft, not soft ground, just a stone to cover for, for her head for nine days long, no eating, no drinking. And they fast sometimes if they wanted to request something from the gods, yeah. So nine days long, nine days and nights, she has to lay absolutely immobile. And people walk around her chanting or um, reciting their mysterious mantras and all that. And after nine days, she came back and she told the vision that she saw during these nine days. Then, according to that, you either become queen or princess or just some other kind of title. So she got the title, the queen, Queen Azula. That is uh, from heaven given to her, yeah. And these type of people <laughs> came to me for initiation. The queen came to my house. The heavenly queen came to my house, not a normal queen. She has to tell her vision to, to the council, you know, elder council of her, her faith. Then they decide what title, what level she has attained, yes. And they all know, so she cannot lie, yeah. These are elder, they are much more powerful, more clairvoyant and more uh, telepathic than her, of course, yeah. So she, there's no lie in there, <laughs> cannot. <laughs> Yes. So that's how she became queen. And then uh, this type of queen came to my temple. Or a humble nun cleaning toilet at that time to uh, request initiation. I said, how did you know this place? She said, it told to her in her vision. She forgot Ching Hai, she only remembered Ching. But she remembered the, the address, okay, <laughs> come with a group. Yeah, of her followers and also, I don't remember, a king or queen, whatever, yeah, princess. And uh, I say, I don't believe how you know all this. Maybe somebody told you, he said, no, nobody told me. Only the inner guy told her to go to this address. This temple is uh, not, uh, it doesn't look like a normal Buddhist temple. It's just a building, a part of a building attached to you know, the whole long block, and it's just one part of it. It made into a temple. And the master uh, at that time, he bought that temple just to teach the American disciples. Every three months he go there. And his disciples, uh, I, I count on my finger, maybe about uh, 30, 40, you know, small temple, and they come every Sunday to listen to him, and he made retreat with them sometimes, yeah. And the retreat maybe 20 or 20 something people, yeah. So it's not like a temple that is famous, yeah. It doesn't look like a temple outside, it's just a normal apartment, okay. This temple is a not, a, it doesn't look like a normal Buddhist temple, it's just a building a part of a building attached to, you know, the whole long block, and it's just one part of it. It made into a temple. And the master, uh, at that time, he bought that temple just to teach the American disciples. Every three months he go there. 
and his disciples, uh, I, I count on my finger, maybe about uh, 30, 40, you know, small temple, and they come every Sunday to listen to him, and he made retreat with them sometimes, yeah. And the retreat maybe 20 or 20 something people, yeah. So it's not like a temple that is famous, yeah. It doesn't look like a temple outside, it's just a normal apartment, okay. It has a two story and a basement, yeah. The basement is a kitchen, cooking, and eating community. And the first floor is for. Uh, for the Buddhas, the hall and meditation. The uh, third floor is a, a living quarter. I have one small room in there. Yeah. And the master live in the front. I live in the back. Yeah. One room, yeah. uh, separate by a corridor and an empty room. Yes. So, uh, if I if I were to go outside long distance and come back and not written the address of the temple, I would have got lost. <laughs> but they found the temple, all right, ring the bell. I was alone, the, the abbot, he came back and forth, you know? He has a green car, came back and forth. So anyway, they came in, you know, and tell me, they described what the inner guy told, told them about me. Say, I would give initiation and you can have the sound, you can hear the ocean, so I thought she cannot be lying. And I asked her if she know anything about the light and sound method, yeah, and about certain such teaching, you know, at least similar teaching or something. Did she read anything? They said, no, no idea. <laughs> Just the guy told us to come here and you will give us the uh, spiritual anointment and then we will hear the ocean, even if we don't have ocean, something like that. So I thought they cannot be lying. What for? They lied to me, yeah. Because I was, I did not uh, plan to <laughs> initiate anybody. I'm just living in temple, cleaning bathroom and floor every day. And then so I say, okay, but uh, you have to be uh, vegetarian, huh? I say, yes, we are already. Because in their tradition, also maybe like that. Oh, very sincere, good experience. And then they keep coming to see me sometimes afterwards, yeah? And then meditate with me all alone. I give them the room that the abbot always reserved to see his disciples during the retreat, yeah? So, so I say, you stay down there, I stay in my room, because I cannot give you the upstairs room. Upstairs only one room for the master, and the other room for meditation. Also upstairs there's one meditation room for the disciple when they come in the morning, they come meditate with him. Oh, before that, I was thinking they're mistaken. They said, if you are looking for the abbot, he's not here. You come back in two months, he will be back here. And uh, his name is not Ching, I told him. He's a Buddhist monk. So they say, no, no. They say, Master Ching. <laughs> I say, you yeah, maybe Master Chi, yeah? Master Chi. I mean, he's a man. Maybe Chi is India for great master, eh? People always say Guruji, yeah? Maharaji, uh, Mataji, <laughs> Babuji, uh, Babaji, everything. Chi means great. So I think maybe that's uh, what your guy meant by Master Ji, but he's not here. And then she said, no, no because the guy say it's a woman. And uh, does the abbot teach the ocean, <laughs> ocean method? I said, no, I, he doesn't know anything about the ocean stuff. So she said, then it's not. Do you know? They asked me if I know anything about ocean sound. I said, I know some. <laughs> and they said, that's you then. You, you're a woman, and you know about the ocean sound inside. So it's not the abbot that we are looking for. So then I had to give them initiation. Yeah, they came from a long way. And I give them food to eat and extra, and then they came back some other time. But they are afraid of ghosts. They're supposed to be ghostbusters, you know, they are the kind of exorcist people. They can see ghosts, all right. Yeah. And then uh, one day they came to me and they, they came up to say, can we sleep with you upstairs? I said, small room. 
I, I'm not used to with sleeping with other people. You have all the room downstairs. It's more comfortable. And the bathroom, everything for you. You know, toilet, so easy. She said, no, there's so many ghosts down there. About 300 at least of them. Yeah, I said, well. <laughs> I said, it's a temple. You know, ghosts are also welcome. <laughs> It didn't say outside that ghosts cannot come. I said, besides, the temples are feeding the ghosts every day also. You know, symbolic with the mantra, and then you multiply it, it's just symbolic. Throw a few drops of water and some little rice, and then you multi multiply it, and then the ghosts come. And also listen to us chanting Buddhist sutra and, and liturgy, something like that. Okay. Can you check on internet for me? You know, like feeding goes or praying to God before you eat. Ah, a long time I didn't use that word. So that wise, this is their home. <laughs> so it's natural that they stay here, but they will not harm you. I promise. Because look at me and the abbot and other people, they come and go. You know, I stay here, nothing happened. Don't worry. Besides, if the ghosts can be down there, they can also come up there, you know. So what's the difference? <laughs> so <laughs> the ghosts, <laughs> I said the ghosts, they're free, freer than us. They just zoop up there just like that, quicker than us going by stairs. So if you come in here, what's the difference? So she said, no, no, it's different. There's no ghosts here. They only stay downstairs. Here you only have uh, three, four masters with you. And there's a master with a big long bear. He, he, his name is Baba Sawan Singh. And other master, she names all the master and all that, you know. <laughs> and I said, to, when, when I initiated her, she saw Baba Sawan Singh inside. And he told her uh, his name and said that he and I are one. Baba Sawan Singh and I are one. Yeah. <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> I thought I told you that before, I didn't, no? I did not? Okay. And I said, how do you know, name Baba Sawan Singh? He said, he told me inside. You know, they are very sincere and very, uh, you know, spiritually pure. And then uh, I, I was uh, also say, oh, okay, if he say so, then it is so. <laughs> the master would not lie to you, for what reason? <laughs> the inner experience, you know, and she see that the Baba Sawan Singh took her, you know, into the, to see God in the throne of God. Yeah. And she was crying, crying. She said, I never imagined, I never, all my life, I never imagined that I could even go to near the throne of God and speaking to him like that. Uh, at that time, it's not a very high God yet, at least you know, within the fifth world, but still she was crying, crying. Oh, she cried non-stop. I say, oh, stop, or oh, why you will dry out. You know? <laughs> I will not see you anymore. I say, where are Azula? Where, where? <laughs> so I gave her drink and all that, and okay. They all have good experiences inside at that time, yeah. And then they even came to Taiwan to see me. At that time, I live in a <laughs> jungle, a forest, you know. Young Minsan, we didn't have house or anything, we just have a tent. And there's a, they, somehow they put some metal sheet together, make it into a square little hut for me. Yeah. I let her stay in there. And then she's afraid of ghosts again. <laughs> oh. Oh. I say, you just imagine, you ask these nuns, at that time, I have about, I don't know, more than ten nuns and monks with me together. And we share clothes. We didn't have enough money to buy clothes. Yeah. I gave them my clothes. I keep only one for myself, because we didn't have enough money to buy clothes. Nuns clothes, yeah? And then, hey, we okay. We okay. Anyway, <laughs> we were happy. <laughs> we didn't have a lot of money, but we were happy. I think I grow some sprouts and vegetables to sell. <laughs> Then we had a little money somehow. I can't remember how we survived. And the nuns, they were making some leaflets, you know, like a, a weekly uh, news, <laughs> one paper, <laughs> one piece of paper, to copy some of the talk. Uh, I talked to them and then they, they sent it to whomever, yeah. <laughs>
So we had a big tent, you know, about three, four meter long and two meter wide. And she came and I let her stay in the metal sheet uh, hut already. And she's still scared of ghosts. Coming to tell me, oh, so many ghosts here. How you live here? I said, we live. <laughs> it's, they live here before, before we came. So we should just apologize to them <laughs> that they, they let us also stay. Because that mountain called Yang Ming Shan, you know, is a national park. Except for those who already stay there, long, long, long ancestry uh, left behind a house that nobody can build anymore, houses. And it's supposed to be a very haunted area. They make a lot of joke about it, you know? Like uh, sometimes some taxi driver don't dare to take people to that area because when they pay the money, uh, it's not real. When they come back, they realize it's, it's ghost money. It's not real. <laughs> it's a special, a special type of ghost money. Oh, yeah, so she is a witness. I'm not lying, okay? I heard only, but I wasn't sure. We live there. Nobody, no ghost ever dare come to us. We are just more <laughs> vicious than ghosts or something. <laughs> I said, don't worry. We are initiated into Kuan Yin method. No ghost can do anything to you. Besides, you are a ghostbuster. You are a master of ghostbuster. You do exorcism. How are you afraid of ghosts? <laughs> then if your client heard about this, how would they come to you again? <laughs> she said, oh, too many, too many. And big, big ghosts, big ghosts. I said, big or small, they don't do nothing to us. You know, we all live here together in harmony. Because we do no harm to them. They do no harm to us. Yeah. Hey, this she still tried to come to me all the time with the ghost stuff. So I give her some fruit, whatever we had. She said, oh, this good fruit, you know. The ghosts eat, they will not touch you. <laughs> <laughs> they will not go near. No ghosts will bother us, you know. They, they just let us see them. If we see or not, we don't really care, you know. The ghosts don't dare to appear in front of me and, and my nuns and monks at that time. Hmm. Or maybe we were blind, you know, <laughs> or deaf <laughs> to the world. People say when you're deaf, you're not afraid of cannon or guns. <laughs> you're nothing. <laughs> because of that, we one time make a very naughty joke, you know. We say, don't come home so late. <laughs> uh, and then uh, another, I say to nuns and monks, sometimes they have to go out, buy stuff, you know, buy food or something. I don't remember how we survived there. At least we have water. There's a stream running <laughs> around our tent. And the stream water is so beautiful, so crystal, crystal clear. Mm. And we survive because we have water there, so we don't care, you know. We used to drink worse water than that, dirty water. From when we were, had no place, we'd run around on the street. Any water we drink and nothing happened. Truly, we are protected. Yeah, because some, some water, you know, dirty, very dirty. But we just use uh, our cloth, you know, our monk's rope or something, you know, filter it and then cook. Yeah. But the water truly was very dirty. But sometimes we have nowhere else to go. We cannot find anywhere else. We were on the street, you know. And so we just drink anything, and no problem. Over there we had, you know, we just had that uh, uh, piece of land and then the water running all year round. Small stream, but running all the time, and beautiful, clear. First time we see the clear stream that nobody tempered with it, and no contamination. Wow, we were so lucky and happy. We plan to stay there forever. <laughs> No, Mangshan just fit in. Just you found it? Metaji, it says, Metaji means customary public worship performed by religious group. Customary public worship performed by a religious group, that's correct. Liturgy also 
Uh, we praise God and we thank God, you know, for eating and for the food that we eat. Yeah, that form of worship, pray, uh, praying is called liturgy. Yeah, and also in Buddhist, we also thank the Buddha and all that, and then we feed some to the ghost. So actually, the ghost did come. Three <laughs> uh, hundred plus of them. Yeah. So we have witness. <laughs> Queen Azula saw it. <laughs> I think she's still alive in America. Long time no see. I keep changing areas, so I don't think she can ever catch me anymore. Oh, when I get was a monk, just a gong yang la. No man, Chao Ke Wang Ke na ge la, just a little chi. Ah, they have Tian Zhu Jiao ye you la. Ah, okay, little chi. Yeah. Ah, yeah. So there's a joke about the little chi. Yeah. I was a, a priest, yeah, went to Africa, trying to spread the teaching of Jesus, yeah. But he has to went through the jungle, and he caught the lion. The lion wanted to eat him, definitely cannot run. So the priest knelt down and <laughs> and uh, say 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 some some stuff, yeah. And uh, the lion say, "What are you saying?" Because he said, "Let let me let me do liturgy first before before you eat me." So he kneeled down, kneeled down and prayed to God and say, "Thank you and all this and uh, you know save my soul stuff, you know." And then the the lion, the lion also kneel, yeah. And then also, <laughs> so the priest say, "I am kneeling to pray to God and you know to pray to, to save my soul and help me and what are you kneeling for?" The lion say, "I before eating, you have to make liturgy, you know. <laughs> before having a meal, you have to give thanks, <laughs> do the liturgy." <laughs> That's how I remember the word liturgy. <laughs> okay, the pious lion, huh? Yeah. <laughs> if I were to continue breatharian, I guess I cannot do this job. It's a different field. Yeah, I probably have better life. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think I can do much uh, further work or enlarge work. Yeah, like what I'm doing right now. But sometimes I say to myself, "You busy body, <laughs> how can you do all this? Even the Supreme Master Television is a big work for me already. How I have even dogs." I have to put on makeup, wear clothes, design, all that thing, <sighs> and business. Business oh, also give me trouble sometimes. The staff and you know the tax and the accounting stuff. Sometimes I thought, oh man, <laughs> you are truly a busy body, aren't you? <laughs> I talk to myself. I scold myself. So you are the only one to be blamed. No God, no Maya, no Satan, no demon, no one. You, the only one. Because one thing leads to another. You understand? If you have business, you have to take care of this and that and that. If you give initiation, you have to go and see this and that people. You have to take care of them inside out. Yeah? It's not like uh, I, you can come and sit here and I feel nothing from you. I don't feel any tug, any pull, any <laughs> crying, all, all that stuff. Yeah, it's not like I give you initiation and then I don't hear that you at home having trouble, tucking as master photo and one this, one that. It's okay if you really need, but sometimes you don't even need. You just ask for this and that to test the master. This thing won't work. Do your homework, okay? You pray to Master when you need, of course, but not always abusing our relationship. Hmm? Yeah. Not like you just get married and have a child and then no problem. <laughs> no. <laughs> problem comes, yeah, with the marriage and with the child. You didn't know that until you're in. <laughs> Similar, no? just uh, one wife, one child, and one job, and one house, and you already have a lot of problems. Mm. I have many houses, because before I keep running around, and every 
every country, I buy this and buy that, yeah, for ashram, and then later it become too small, and then I can't even sell it, it takes some time. And before I had nobody with me to help me, so it, I put it in my name, and now I had to go there to take care, because some country don't accept, uh, like just, uh, how you say, mm, authorized letter or passport, you have to go in person in front of a nota or a lawyer, blah, blah, blah. I know no end to trouble. No end to trouble, yeah. I have many houses because before I keep running around and every, every country I buy this and buy that, yeah, for ashram and then later it become too small and then I can't even sell it, it takes some time. And before I had nobody with me to help me, so it, I put it in my name, and now I had to go there to take care, because some country don't accept, uh, like just, uh, how you say, mm, authorized letter or passport, you have to go in person, in front of a nota or a lawyer, blah, 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 I know no end to trouble. No end to trouble, yeah. Yeah, and even ashram have to take care, you know, not this ashram, only other ashram, blah, 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 you know. And one thing will lead to another. <laughs> it's never single. It's never just single uh, business or single event or single uh, thing. Yeah. And you would think that uh, practitioner don't care about material. It's true. Yeah, it is absolutely true. Despite the, what you see on me, I don't really care. I'm happy just to stay in any little cave or corner, anywhere, as long as I have somewhere to stay so that I can work, you know? Because when you work a lot, you don't care about what you wear or not wear. <sighs> I mostly just uh, sleep on a sofa. You know, I did not even have a bed. <laughs> Many places I don't have a bed. And now they told me, 21st century already, Master, don't stay in cave anymore. <laughs> I say, it's the same to me. It's just they keep bugging me. You know how disciples, they can bug you, huh? They keep nagging you until you give in. Mm. And even threaten me that the cave is not good for my health and all that stuff. <laughs> Could be true also, yeah. That did scare me a little bit. <laughs> Because if the cave is not natural, you know, it's made with some other synthetic stuff, it could be after a long time, it became, you know, a rotten, and even you don't see it, the dust and all that will be affecting your health. That scared me a little bit. <laughs> that did convince me a little bit, because <laughs> I do want to stay healthy. I don't like to get sick and then have to work at the same time. It's bad that when you're already healthy, and need to work so much like I do already. What if you're sick and work like that? How? And then you bother disciples, you know, they have to take you to doctor and hospital and take care of you if you're seriously sick and all that, you know, bothering everybody. And it's not good when you're sick and having disciples around. Either they help you, but in a clumsy way, it makes more trouble, or they have you, but they want something else, and it's, 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 you know, it's worse than having no one around, I'm telling you. Very difficult to find unconditional so-called disciples, very difficult. What kind of glass is this? Is it for a far scene or something? No, for driving? <laughs> it just look a little bit no more classy, you know. I like beauty, tell you already. <laughs> but I don't need it. I like this, I mean, I need it. When I'm alone, I really feel free and happy. You don't have to change clothes a lot. You, the dogs doesn't care how I look in the morning <laughs> or any time. I just uh, zip my hair up, you know, and then I wear what I wear. It is not often that I have to play so many roles at the same time, like this time. I found it's a little difficult, <laughs> difficult <laughs> for me, yeah, yeah. If you just be a Hindu master, an uh, in Indian master, where uh, grows and like him, then you look good already, no matter what. 
You no need to put lipstick, nothing. You still look good. The longer they wear, they look more, more master-like and good-looking, right? Yeah, men are so wonderful. They don't need to do anything <laughs> about themselves. A woman always run around after them, gaga, after men. And women put a lot of lipstick and stuff, and uh, hair and nails and stuff, and sometimes cannot even find a man, like me, for example. It's a typical example. <laughs> you think, huh? There's still some men after me nowadays. Can you believe that? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Troublemaker. Mm. <laughs> I say to them, no, 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 no. I no more, I no more of this game, huh? I'm tired. <laughs> we continue. That was calendar only, right? Four o'clock. You wanna go eat now and co continue next week? No. What do you mean no? It's still long. <laughs> No, we keep it like soap opera, you know, next week. <laughs> because I talk a lot today and I talk slow also. Mm. Eight, four o'clock, everybody has to go, okay? Go home next week. That's what it is, yeah. I also want to stay, but you have to go, yeah? Because your bus is waiting, your, you know, beloved karma waiting at home. <laughs> <laughs> Your beautiful karma waiting somewhere. Huh? I can sit here forever. <laughs> and they can sit here forever. Uh, you know, go. Otherwise they would think that I capture you using some magic power or something. I wish I have. Then I can use magic on the whole world and then we finish with all the trouble. Hmm? Quick. <laughs> all right. Huh. Next week, continue story. Yeah, that's how television works, you know? They <laughs> Next week, <laughs> soap opera. So people keep continue to watch. More interesting. Yeah, uh, it worked for me. I'm getting older now. You don't feel so interested in me anymore. But the story gets very excited now. We begin to get more excited. You never know what happened next, right? So, okay, see you next time. If I come next time. If next week I get out again or not. Don't know, okay? All right, thank you, huh? Pastor, can I share something with you? Yeah. <laughs> he wants to keep me. That's what it means. That's what it means. Tell me. Oh, yeah, by the way, no, the fruit is good. By the way, last time it's just for little, some little kids, but uh, the fruit is good. Uh, this one, the, oh, a lot of garbage, you know? All these, all these kind of things, a lot of garbage for the world. So it was correct. You did last week, you did not buy, it was correct. I was thinking the kids would probably prefer to have some candies or cake from me for once. At home they're not allowed, maybe so. But never mind, you, you did uh, well, you did good. Don't, don't buy this anymore, okay? Though this is easier for me to, to give. You got an apple, you have thrown like that. Oh, my glass, my glass, my head, oh, my head. Master, it's an egg. <laughs> this is easy. <laughs> Yeah, share. Yeah. Tell me. I'm busy. My hand, not my ears. In one of the videos of your teaching today, yeah. uh, you, were, uh, you were talking about more governments should put uh, animal protection laws. And I just wanted to share something from Iran. And uh, in Iran, I think it was about uh, one month ago or two months. It's, uh, so they officially now um, approved uh, the law to, uh, that harming the animals is a crime. In Iran? Uh, yes. No. Wow. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Allah. Thank you, Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon you. Wow. And uh, there was, um, in the last um, couple of years, uh, there was a lot of uh, harming, uh, the, especially harming the dogs was going on in, in Iran. Mm -hmm. And people were filming and uh, reporting this. Uh -huh. And even before this uh, law gets uh, approved, uh, already some uh, local mayors uh, or the province mayors, they 
they a, forbid this yeah, kind. Yeah, they, they ask to people to come and tell them who Aha, is that oh, guy the, that did that thing. To and do the cruelty, yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. Iran, huh? Wow. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Allah. <laughs> Praise the Allah. <laughs> wow, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Very good. Excellent news. Very good. Is going, is coming. Yeah, it's coming soon. Everything get better. Uh, you give this to the Chinese people and the Vietnamese people and the Westerner, you know, the um, non-Asian people. Up, up here. Oh, that that one's more easier. Same, huh? Are you bigger even? <laughs> I saw only half of it. I thought it's smaller. Yeah, how's that? Gong yang. Eh, Okay, it's for the Chinese from China and from the Olaf people, okay? They share within themselves. Give it to the group leader and they give it to each other, okay? We are trying to make a little bit of it, huh? Okay. Mm. Yeah. Let's see, they will come to take it. The leader, the leader, come to take it, okay? người lãnh đạo lại lấy để chia, okay? Mm. Today I cannot eat with you guys, huh? Sorry, you eat alone, huh? Today heaven told me not to eat with you. <laughs> Actually, last time I eat with some people, a new initiate maybe, and I, it's not so very good energy, huh? It's like picking me like like needles, you know? Well, I was eating there. I feel picking here, there. Uh, lucky, not the whole body, just here, <laughs> everywhere, <laughs> here and there. And this time, uh, heaven warned me not to eat with you guys, so I just not eat this week with you, huh? Maybe next week again. Dear Master, in India, we have a tradition that whenever we cook for us in the morning, First, uh, we offer it to the uh, God. Yes. And, uh, Guruji. Yes. And then first, the chapati is known as gau grass. Ah. Uh. And uh, second for the do uh, dogs, mm -hmm. and third for the cro crows. Ah, wow! You still do that? Yeah. Okay. Very good. Very good. Continue. Hmm. Every country, I think they do have some. A different tradition, just to offer to God or to, you know, to invisible being. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Next week, okay? Yeah. Thank you. You must go home. Mm -hmm. The Taiwanese have to go home. The Chinese have to go to eat. The Westerner must go eat. I don't see you enough, but I don't know how is enough. The dogs don't see me enough. <laughs> I don't see myself enough. <laughs> yeah, truly. <laughs> <laughs> Truly. <laughs> Either I meditate, I don't see myself anymore, or I'm, when I get up, I see only uh, documents in front of my nose. Yeah? Yeah, because uh, that's why sometimes I don't eat on time and the food uh, get cold and everything, because I bring food with document together. I, I don't want them to keep, have to keep coming and going, because they, we are all busy. Yeah? There's some extra work they do, they bring food for me. So sometimes they bring breakfast, uh, <laughs> lately bring only dinner, before bring only breakfast, and later I say, oh, breakfast too early. They have to bring at seven o'clock, mean they have to get up at six or something, you know. So I say, no, just bring dinner then. I mean the lunch, after lunch, uh, afternoon, afternoon. And then 
Now here they bring again breakfast and dinner. I put them all together. You know, when, when I have time, I open all of them and see which one good. <laughs> I pick some. <laughs> It's also very nice, you know. <laughs> you array them all out on the table, you know, and you feel like, oh, a king or something. <laughs> yeah, so many, you know. Uh, they put in s containers, and you just spread them all out. <laughs> some for the dog, some for me, <laughs> some for the document. It drops some <laughs> on the document. <laughs> Maybe the document also feel hungry. <laughs> Okay then, I love you, but I leave you, huh? See you next time. I hope next time I can really get out of my samadhi. Because sometimes for the work I have to get out, but I don't... Sometimes I get out, but it takes me a long time to, to, to focus on the work. Otherwise I cannot focus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe I'm older, that's why. <laughs> Ciao, bambino. <laughs> That means Chai Tien. Chai Tien Hai Zeman. Ah, Ting Kuo La, thank you. You may have some Xin Xian Da. I keep saying, I love you, I love you. I say, I heard all this all the time. Anything new? <laughs> okay, La. Dadia Chao Gu. All of you, take care of yourself. Da Lu, Xiao Lu, Zhong Lu. Ah, okay. <laughs> No problem. Love is all I have. Nothing else. <laughs> I cannot give you anything else. Love is all I have. <laughs> love, love is all we need. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know all of you love me. I heard that all the time. Something new. This is the first Oh, no, no, no. No, no. No. Yeah,我要 听懂没有? Biết nhà bếp ha? Okay, ở đó có chuẩn bị đồ ăn cho quý vị, ok? À, chủ phạm chuẩn bị cái ta lưu tung si ha? Ai yêu? Ai yêu? What's the name? I maybe pop in just to say hello ha? If you go there. Everybody out! Look! Run, run, run! Cảm ơn chú chi! Chai hoa miền! Hào khăn! Đây cho bên hành chiều khăn bữa tàu! Ôi, chậu thân chị! Wow! Đồ ăn nhiều ngon quá vậy ha? <cười> Okay, oh他意思说这个眼睛好看我认为他认为我认为他赞我的眼睛哦开玩笑了开玩笑我无所谓<笑> thank you thank you 
，不习惯嘛，不习惯。今天太累哦，躺一下，哇，好舒服。哎<笑>、欸，我本来想抱怨说，怎么弄那么大的一个床干什么？我们和尚不能睡高大床啊。结果我说，哎呀，算了嘛，你这个老人家，若说。人家给什么就拿什么就好了嘛，何必一天到晚批评？要求这个要求那个，有床就有嘛，没有床就睡沙发，有床就睡床，何必这样子在那边还是顾顾顾那个和什么上的身份，然后看起来已经不上和尚了，还还抱怨什么？害怕什么？懂不懂？看起来很漂亮，好久没有这样，因为我就是。躺在沙发上嘛，沙发而已啊。然后狗在旁边呢、啊，是狗在下面。现在看起来那个床哇，好设施，好像好久没看到这种设施啊，好像皇家一样那种床啊。也不是怎么样，就是他们弄了那个床单啊，什么枕头弄漂漂亮亮，跟旅馆一样。我<笑>看你也怕怕了，是给我吗？<笑>我很久都太随便习惯了，懂不懂？随便的沙发，我是地板，我是什么？啊，就是有时间，所以已经觉得很感激不尽了。哪里有这么漂亮的床单呢？弄漂漂亮亮的，弄漂亮的床单呢？也只是灰色的，也不什么很豪华的，就是亮亮的，很平的，懂不懂？我好久没有那种那么平的床单。沙发的话，把他们把那个什么棉被把它铺上去，这样，懂不懂？然后下面就睡，上面就盖起来，这样已经很舒服。来不及睡了，还要想什么？铺什么东西啊？这这个这个房子看起来好像很奢侈了一点，事实上都是画柜弄铺起来的嘛，是不是？画柜他们。画柜嘛，是不是啊？他们弄在外面铺一层什么的，然后看起来很像房子。哦，现在我觉得我像人呢。<笑>我觉得跟他们说，我现在很像人了啊,啊，有人的房子啊，人的床啊，还、啊、外面还有什么凉亭呢？哇，觉得啊，不知道是给我是给谁的。我又觉得还是那个山东还是对我比较适当，我还觉得我是睡山东好了。不过今天太累了，然后睡不着嘛，晚上被你们吵了，打坐也打不下去。起来想弄一个早菜给自己看看，那西方的那种土司啊，哎，果酱啊那些，他们又给我几罐了。好久没吃了，然后吐一吐看看，结果弄四个都弄烤的，烤都看不到是什么东西了，烤黑都看不看不到形状，所以说算了，大概我命不好，不能吃那个土司跟果酱算了，<笑>啊，没事了，那个不专心嘛，懂不懂？哎、呃，那个现在他们买那个什么土司烤烤烤箱那个。烤相机的太新了，太亮了，我看不到哪一个是号码。哦，好亮啊！那我平常我有那个小小的，比较便宜那个，比他那个一半的小的而已，很简单啊，号码很清楚。这个太亮了，懂不懂？高级嘛，高级的。我我找了半天，不知道随便乱弄，我烤焦了。哎，一传身而已就烤焦了，这个太。太科技太厉害嘛，大概太贵了，然后呵呵太亮了，我懂，太快了，快了。平常我在家里那个小的那个傻瓜的烤相机，都烤了半天，它才它才黄黄起来。这个哇，一全身一进去那个一个另外一个房子，一出来哇，这整个房子都那个味道，还有那个这看起来全部都黑了。呵呵真的是黑的，不是不是烤一点焦焦，真的黑的，黑跟那个什么马路那些什么柏油一样啊！然后再烤，又再烤黑了。哎呀，你们那个买什么新的给我？要写清楚大一点的英文 ，OK？ 我不是随时都戴那个眼镜看的，懂不懂？我不是随时都都在办公室才有眼睛啊，看不到。<笑>烤焦四个托斯。我就投降了，不考了，<笑>以后再慢慢来试看看。<笑>不过你们都有准备的很好了，多数都有写的很大的英文的，也不错，多谢大家了啊。
，都写的保养的蛮不错，嗯。现在我来了就乱掉了，没有像你们那个我不在的时候那么保养那么漂亮了。现在狗的棉被丢在这里，狗的床在那里，狗的那个脚的印啊，在这边，然后在沙发哇，因为后面弄那个呃潮的圆有没有？然后那个那个水太过分了，它就是变成泥巴了。而狗它跑到那边了，它好喜欢草，跑那边然后进来，哇、哦，好多花，啊、嗯，印那个它的脚印像花一样，到处整满满都是，没有一个米粒的没有那个它的花印出来盖章了，嗯，现在很乱了，没什么好看了，没有像你们弄那个刚弄那个时候，没关系，房子都这样子嘛，给人家租嘛 ，OK 哈，好了，啊，再见了啊。大家平安啊！哎，尽量呃打坐，不是打瞌睡啊，打跟打不一样。OK， 打坐、打瞌睡不一样。呃、啊、，OK，Thank、okay, you 了，好，谢谢。我知道你们大家都尽量了，不过有一些太随便了一点啊。做什么工作都要尊重我们的那个职业，听懂没有？不管你小弟也好 ，OK， 骑厕所在 airport 那个机场也好，任何的工作都是有上帝看的 ，OK， 做的就是有工作的。那个上帝也是在那些小弟的人外面的，在开计程车的人的，懂不懂？所以我们自己要做事，也是跟他们外面的人一样。他们做不好就失业啦，没工作啦，没饭吃了。那跟师傅工作，当然也不会这样这么糟糕。嗯，不过也要要尊重自己的工作 ，OK？ 不能太随便了，这样就表示说不尊重自己的，又不尊重别人，懂不懂 ？I am sorry, I have to speak Chinese to this.、Uh, Uh, my beloved karma, okay, different kind of karma, about the kind of less than excellent job they're doing. Okay, I have to tell them something. Maybe they change in the future. They take more care and more attention. We give them trouble. They make them feel like they're suffering every day. They still have to do it. They don't do it. Their way of doing it is like this. Do you understand? Yes. 然后自己也不好，所以对别人不好，就对我们不好就对了，了解吗 ？OK， 嗯，人呢不是像狗一样，你对了他怎么样，他不不说怎么样，也许他也说怎么样，你听不到，<笑>听懂吗？有一些狗会说怎么样、欸？哎，是啊，哎呀，我的狗它抱怨，它说我的它的助手没给它够那个呃素食的摇的东西。哎，是牙骨，哎，嘿，那些不是素食，不是要吃的东西，不过他们很爱这个，整包给他，他也吃的。不过那不是食物啊，不能给很多啊。然后我告诉他们不要给太多，因为他们进来我还在给嘛。说他抱怨跟我说他不喜欢那个，不喜欢那个。我说为什么？为什么？哎，对狗不好，<笑>对待狗不好。我说怎么不好？他不给。不给那个零嘴啊！我说有啊，我教他们给，哎，太小，<笑>那个大的很会抱怨。<笑>还有说哦，小孩太吵了，啊，喜欢一个人，哎，小狗嘛，小狗年轻啊，崇拜他，看到他就哇哦，跳舞、唱歌，亮来亮去，黏在他旁边哦，他受不了，跟他们睡觉，他说他也不喜欢。哎，嗯、啊，那个像是小孩的元气，那个那个年轻的那个小狗元气好凶啊！他跟我这样讲，他不喜欢跟他们在一起。哎，有了狗会讲怎么样了？就是我们听不到而已啊，你们听不到而已，我也不想听这些了。<笑>哎，抱怨一大堆，那个大的哦，专门抱怨。嗯，哎，这边太冷，那边太热。<笑>呃，零嘴不够，零嘴太小，嗯，啊，不喜欢这个零嘴，喜欢那个零嘴，嗯、啊，都是这样的，了解吗？哎，会会会讲话，他们都很会讲话，就是你们听不到，有一些会听得到。
，知道了啊、哦。OK， 知道了。我不说谎，你们有一些会听得到，知道了啊。哎呀，不过呵呵听不到狗没关系了，听到佛还好啦。OK， 呵呵听到上帝就 OK 了。听不到狗的话没关系，我们以前都会啦，现在。生生世世累累劫的那些吃乱七八糟的，呃，做乱七八糟的，所以我们失重很多神通了，很多能力了啊。OK， 以前可以飞了，现在吃太多沉下来了，<笑>太重了啊。刚来的时候，一些一阵子还会飞了，然后男看到女也不会怎么样，女看到男也不会怎么样，后来越吃越怎么样，哎。麻烦是这样子，好了 ，OK， 嗯、啊，现在你们也很想吃空气而已了，呃、想而已，就不会改变任何了，可以想想是没关系呵呵 ，OK， 爱够呢 ，Thank you， 拜拜，谢谢大家帮忙 ，OK， 谢谢呢，照顾房子啊，我试看看而已，我不晓得赖得下去吗？我习惯西湖吗？懂吗？嗯，习惯了，那边单独一个人了，在这边住好像路边一样。<笑>哎呀，他就开在路边了，然后社交围都没什么，呃，园里的一个小小园里后面有一一点草而已啊。西湖是到处都是有地方的，嗯、啊，就可以走动啊。OK， 好了，没关系了啊，就是怎么样怎么样。不过住住这边的话也有好处了。就是不用开车走来走去，有时候冒险了一点，像上一次在高速公路爆炸那样啊，嗯，以前在法国也有爆炸过一次，嗯，这次在这边下个礼拜有爆炸了，爆炸了啊，嗯，我怪那些那些神呐、啊，那些那些要照顾我那个安全的事，怎么不跟我讲？他说。我、哦、不能说，<笑>哎呀，我说谁说不能说？我说你呀、啊，我啊，本娘啊，我说什么时候？我说不能跟我讲这些事情，不能警告我。他说，呃，好久讲好久了，还没下来已经讲了，我们都不能吭吭一声啊，不能讲任何。哎呀，我说谢谢啦，啊，你们在旁边有大用哈啊啊，好像跟我徒弟一模一样呢。需要的时候都没，啊，不需要就好多人，呵呵啊，近几天很多人，我需要的时候我一个人好累好累啊，要安排东西啊，要打包要卸包啊，啊，我觉得有时候忙不过来，不过不敢找任何人啊，了解吗？找他也许他把我东西破坏啊，呵呵或是掉来掉去，或或是我发脾气什么的，然后破坏感情啊。啊，最好我一个人慢慢来好了，能做就做，不能做算了。<笑>啊，哎，无条件的人很难找啊。然后来那边又帮我忙，又留一下纪念，无形的。哎，你们不要跪啊，已经老了跪干嘛？站了。You don't know it hurt, okay? It hurt. 上帝保佑，佛保佑，平安，快乐，修行好。OK， 拜拜了。拜。我们都是透明的 ，OK， 连狗也看得透，了解了。你们狗都会看你们的，狗、猫、鸭，怎么都会看到的 ，OK 哈。主不要认为没人知道 ，OK。嗯。拜拜 ，Thank you，Love you。Thank、you